Coming up next, for Tom McEwen, it used to be funny cars and exhibition racing. That's all changed with the mongoose's entry back into the top fuel war. And it's a heavenly match. Exotic cars and beautiful girls. A behind-the-scenes look at the making of the world's biggest-selling automotive calendar. Take a look at these powerful beauties. You know, one horsepower is a lot of muscle. And Tom McEwen is a man who loves horsepower. His fascination with horsepower started with the four-legged variety. But it wasn't long before it graduated from one horsepower to 5,000. Let's take a look at an extraordinary drag racer, Tom McEwen. At the start of the drag racing season, the asphalt rumbled with the roar of engines and the return of a legend. The mongoose is back. Tom McEwen, one of the premier funny car drivers who ever tear up the quarter mile, is back on the track. But while Tom's back, his funny car is not. For the first time, Tom McEwen is at the wheel of a top fuel dragster. It's really a different thing to drive than anything I've driven before. The steering's real fast, and it's like a go-kart. If you move it, it wants to dart all over the place. So you have to have it a real, real easy touch on the steering wheel. And it has such G-force that when you're accelerating at four Gs to the thousand foot mark, it, it tends to, you know, the finish line comes at you very fast. It's an Al Swindle 300 inch brand new dragster. It's got the computers, it's got the 500 cubic inch Keith Black uh, aluminum block, uh, dart heads. It's got all the good stuff. And, uh, somewhere between four and 5,000 horsepower. It runs on nitro-methane, and uh, it's got the best of everything. McEwen's getting this new car and this new chance thanks to baseball star Jack Clark, a first-time owner pursuing a lifelong dream. When I was a little kid, eight, nine years old, my father used to take me out to watch Don Garlitz. That was always kind of his hero. That's where I got my first taste and took pictures with different cars from the freight train to Warren Coburn and Miller, and. Chris Caramanzini's and Garlitz, and uh, so I've just always been a fan. Clark had been thinking about life after baseball for some time. He decided he wanted to help one of his boyhood heroes get back into competition. When he met Kenny Bernstein, things started falling into place. He always he was interested in having a race car and a race team, and we told him, whenever you get ready, let us know. We'll see if we can steer you in the right direction. Tom McEwen is a good friend of ours, and and we steered him in Tom's direction because Tom would do a good job for him and it looks like it's uh, going that way for him. Things have been going Tom McEwen's way for more than three decades. It was Tom who shattered the seven second barrier for funny cars. He set speed records, then broke his own mark. He gained fame when he beat the usually unbeatable Don Perdome and began the legendary rivalry of the Mongoose and the Snake. Everybody had to have a nickname in those days, and they called Perdome the Snake. You know, I mean, when you're 6'2 and you weigh 100 pounds, that's a good nickname for you, you know? And so that was like, it's like Kipling's Jungle Book, Ricky Ticky Tavy, the Mongoose and the Snake, and uh, so we kind of pursued that. Now the mongoose is back, and so is the snake. Both are racing top fuel. And the drag racing world is talking rivalry again. Oh, I just want that bad. <laughs> the rivalry between the snake and the mongoose is so important, and people still know about it, and they read about it, and hear about it from years past. And we need him back in, just like we needed for Dome when he was out for that year also. We needed them both back in. We're glad to see it. You probably got to be about 40 years old to remember that, but uh, uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know, I guess it's back. Uh, you know, Tom and I, I think we both look at it a lot different than we did in the early days. 
Tom says he looks at everything a lot differently since the death of his son, Jamie. He was just 15 when leukemia took his life in 1978. After I lost my son, I got hooked up to the Leukemia Society of America. I'm a, on the sports board of directors of that, and I travel to kids' hospitals every week, and I've got a whole new outlook on life. I look at things a little different since I lost my son and uh, try to enjoy each day that comes along. That's a philosophy that came in handy when Tom found himself out of competition in 1987. He built and exhibited the world's fastest 57 Chevy Funny Car, clocked at 264 miles per hour. And he turned to horsepower of another kind, the kind that run the quarter mile on four legs. It was on horseback that Tom first discovered the thrill of speed. I had horses from the time I was about six years old till I was 16. And then when I got a driver's license when I was 16, same old deal. Didn't have time for the horses anymore. And now the horses won't be seeing as much of Tom. He's grabbed onto this new chance from his new owner. He's got his hands on the wheel, his mind on victory, and his eyes on the prize. I hope that there's a top fuel world championship in there someplace before we're done racing, and that's what we're going after. 35 years that I've been drag racing, I've enjoyed it and uh, met a lot of nice people. And uh, if, if you can uh, make a living at something you love to do, I think we're very fortunate to be able to do that.